neutron stars are some of the most extreme objects in the entire universe. The only thing you can get that's more extreme is a black hole. They're formed when a massive star goes supernova, throwing off its outer layers, and then its core crushes down under gravity to force all the particles in the atoms together to form neutrons as tightly packed as they can physically go. This makes an incredibly dense star. They're around about the size of cities in diameter, so much that a teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh five billion Million kilograms. Now because the stars that go supernova that make neutron stars are spinning at first, for example our sun takes 27 days to spin on its axes, the neutron stars also inherit the star's spin. But because you've crushed all of that material down into the neutron stars so that it's really dense, they spin much faster. It's the same thing that happens when an ice skater is spinning on the spot and then pulls their arms in so that they spin faster. Which means that neutron stars typically spin faster than once every single second. Which is why this month, when this paper was published by Caleb and collaborators reporting on the discovery of a possible neutron star rotating once every 54 minutes, the entire astronomy community went, wait, what? Whatever this thing is, it is weird and not what we expect to find at all. So in this video, we're gonna chat first about how Caleb and collaborators actually found this object known as ASCAP J1935 plus 2148. Then we're gonna chat about what its properties are, including how slow it's spinning. And then finally, chat about what it could possibly be. A neutron star, a white dwarf, or something else. Now you might have seen coverage of this result in the news or online, but with something as weird as this object, how do you know what you're reading or you're watching is a reliable source? Especially for James Webb Space Telescope coverage, I see so many fake JWST results online. And as an expert, I can immediately spot them. But for non-experts, I think the best way to do this is to use Ground News, who are the sponsor of today's video. I found this story about the most distant galaxy ever found that the James Webb Space Telescope recently spotted. Now this might have been a story missed since this was announced by the European Space Agency, so the majority of news outlets covering it were actually outside of the USA. Ground News shows you all of the world's media in one place. It's the brainchild of ex-NASA engineer Harleen Kaur, so of course you know that you can get the latest is space and science news from it. For any given news story, Ground News allows you to get coverage worldwide across the political spectrum all in one place so that you can get diverse perspectives on a topic. And what I love is that you can also compare how different news outlets covered the story and the different language that they use. So The Guardian says, James Webb Space Telescope photographs most distant known galaxy. Then NOS from the Netherlands gives us an exact number in the headline stating that the galaxy is 13.5 billion years old. So you can probably see now why I love ground news. I personally use it to see the full picture and be able to find news that I might be missing to stay fully informed. That's why I love their blind spot feed. It allows me to see news that is under or over reported. So I am really glad to be partnering with them again. So if you head to the link in the video description below at ground.news slash Dr. Becky, you'll get 40% off their Vantage plan to get unlimited access to all of their features. So thanks again to ground news for sponsoring this video. And now let's dive into this this study by Caleb and collaborators and chat first about how they serendipitously discovered this weird object ASCAP J1935 plus 2148. So first of all you have to remember that there are so many different things that change in the sky every night. So you have things that move, you have things that flare, you have things that dim, and you have things that even pulse. And keeping an eye on all of them and discovering new ones is incredibly hard because the sky is just so vastly big and there's just so many of them. Which is why telescopes with very large fields of view, i.e. when they look at the sky they see a big patch at once, are incredibly helpful for this. Which is exactly what happened here in this study. Caleb and collaborators were using the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder, or ASCAP, which is a radio telescope in Western Australia. It's 36 individual antenna, each 12 metres wide, which act as one single telescope so that they can keep an eye on an area of sky 30 square degrees across at once. For context, the full moon is about 0.2 square degrees. So it's an area of sky that's equivalent to 150 full moons. That is 
huge. Compare that to the Hubble Space Telescope field of view, for example, which sees just a tiny patch of sky with one observation that's smaller than the moon. So ASCAP is really useful for spotting things that change in the sky, because you could be looking at one object and see something else happen over in the patch of sky that it sees and records at the same time as the observation you originally cared about, which is exactly what happened here. Caleb and collaborators were actually using ASCAP to observe the gamma ray burst, GRB 221009A back on the 15th of October in 2022. Now the observation of that gamma ray burst lasted about six hours in total, but in the data they got back, they then spotted four pulses from another object, ASCAP J1935 plus 2148, which is about 16,000 light years away. And each of the pulses they saw lasted from between 10 to 50 seconds, which repeated every 3,225 seconds or around every 53 and three quarter minutes. So that brings me to what are the properties of this serendipitously discovered object? Well, the pulses of radio light that Caleb and collaborators spotted can be seen in this plot, shown by the four yellow lines there. And if you assume that period of around about 54 minutes, then the peaks of those pulses all line up in the middle. Now it was spotted again on the 17th of October, shown by the bump in the green line, again on the 22nd of October with the bump shown in the blue line, and then many times in the longer observations that were taken on the 23rd of October that are shown by the pink lines. And you got a few weaker bumps spotted in 2023 by the Meerkat telescope, shown by the black lines. Now usually when you see plots like these, what you're looking at is a pulsar, which are neutron stars with these very strong magnetic fields which end up producing jets of radio light from their pulse. And as the pulsar spins, it acts like a lighthouse so that we detect these bursts of radio light every few milliseconds. And when you work out the period of that pulsar so you can pull out all of these separate pulses and line them up on one of these plots, you can see the pulses all look fairly similar with a little bit of variation. Now if we compare that to what Caleb and collaborators saw for this new object, you can can see how different all of these pulses of radio light are from this object. Which led Caleb and collaborators to assume that this object, whatever it is, must have three different states that it can be in to give these three different types of pulses. Either a state which gives bright pulses which last 10 to 50 seconds, or a state where you get weak pulses that are about 26 times fainter than the bright state which lasts around 370 milliseconds, and then a quiet state with no pulses whatsoever. So whatever Whatever object is giving out that radio light must be very variable. It must be changing a lot to give us these different states and these different pulses that we see, but then still spinning very regularly to give us the pulses that are separated by around about 54 minutes. Which brings me to question three. What could this object possibly be? Neutron star, white dwarf, or something else? So we can think about the populations of pulsars, these spinning neutron stars that we've seen before, and of white dwarfs as well, and compare this object to them. So the slowest spinning neutron star found today was a pulsar that spins every 76 seconds. Again, spotted by Caleb and collaborators, but that time using the Meerkat telescope in South Africa. So a 54 minute period of this new object is very different to seven. 76 seconds, it would make it a huge outlier for neutron stars and pulsars. So let's just for a minute consider the other option that it is a white dwarf, because there is something known as a white dwarf pulsar, which have much longer periods, much longer time between pulses. So a white dwarf is just a less extreme neutron star, so they're formed when stars like the sun shed their outer layers and leave behind just a dense core of helium. So for example, AR Scorpii, which was discovered in 2016, is a white dwarf in orbit around a red dwarf star, which has a radio pulse period of almost two minutes. Now the orbit of the two stars around each other is much longer than that, around about four days, and you do see with visible light, like variation on that time scale, but the radio light varies roughly every two minutes or so, which is thought to be due to the spin of the white dwarf, which is slower than for a neutron star because they're not as dense. Again, akin to like the skater hasn't quite pulled in their arms as much, so they don't quite spin up as fast as they can. So is this new object that Caleb and collaborators have found just another white dwarf pulsar, since its pulses come much slower, and is the variability of the pulses caused by the fact that maybe this is a white dwarf in all 
orbit around another star in a binary system like AR Scorpii. Well, it helps that we can see the object in infrared light with the very large telescope in Chile, which gives Caleb and collaborators a better idea on the size of the object, the radius of it, which is also correlated with the spin period of the object, which meant that they could then estimate the size of the star that's emitting these radio pulses, but then they found that that really wasn't compatible with what we know about white dwarfs. Isolated white dwarf, there's still a chance that this could be a white dwarf in a binary system like we spoke about before, but if that was the case they would usually be like a brighter background radio signal like in between the pulses from the whole system, which we just don't see here with this object. Instead, the overall radio signal from this object looks like a neutron star, and Caleb and collaborators discussed how this could be what's known as a magnetar, a neutron star with an extremely high magnetic field. And if there's anything unstable in this magnetic field, like magnetic field lines getting all tangled, then that could explain the variability in the pulses that we see. So Caleb and collaborators think this object is most likely a neutron star, which if it is, completely challenges everything that we thought we knew about pulsars and neutron stars. Which is why it's so exciting. So the next steps are going to be observing more of these pulses of radio light, perhaps seeing if we can see more of the variability, if that gives us any clues as to what's generating this radio emission, and then also observing the actual star, the object, whatever it is, with visible and infrared wavelengths of light as well. So if we can figure out if this is a binary system of two stars or not, again, to work out what is possibly producing this emission of radio pulses, all with the goal of working out whether this is another white dwarf pulsar or the slowest spinning neutron star we've ever found. And spot these things is very difficult. I'm difficult. I'm difficult. You're challenging. Oh, there's a plane flying over the head and last week the mic picked up the siren or whatever week it was now and because the window is open. Basically, I'm gonna have to close the window and I'm really hot and I'm annoyed. <sighs> like, the mind of like period pulsar, this plane is periodically looping around my house. Is it even a plane or is it that Chinook that was here before this back? Do you know how loud this is? It's a bloody Chinook, that's what it is. Ugh. Chinooks going over my house for no bloody reason in bloody circles. Radio pulses are thought to be coming from the spin of the neutron. The white dwarf, not the neutron star. I'm looking for a slow spinning pulsar. Six five blue eyes. 